Okay, so everybody come to their yoga mat and we'll do the sun salutations and some standing poses before we start introducing some second series. Okay. chant the opening mantra of Ashanga. So while we're doing these live classes, we're not doing it call and repeat since I can't hear you. <laughs> um, so you can try to chant along with me or remain silent as you like. The general meaning of this mantra is to give out thanks, gratitude, thanks to practice, thanks to everyone that keeps the practice alive, including yourselves.
arch of the hands away from the floor. Straightening the arms. Bring the ears between the upper arms. Relax the face. Find a gazing point and breathe deeply.
Bend the knees, gaze forward, step or hop. Inhale, long back, belly and chest open. Exhale, relax the neck. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, Samastiti, stirring the mascara deep. Bend the knees, raise the arms. Inhaling, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold over the legs, relax the neck. Inhale, lift, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, step or hop back and chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Step the right foot to the right thumb. Turn the back foot on the floor at an angle. Raising up, Virabhadrasana A. Exhale, place the hands all the way down. Step back, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, the left foot comes forward, Virabhadrasana. Exhale, all the way back down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Open the chest, gaze to the nose. Exhaling over the toes, downward dog. One, two, three, four, and five. Bend the knees, coming forward, long spine. Exhale, head down. Inhale, Utkatasana. Keep the knees together. Exhale, Samastiti. Second one. Inhale, bend the knees. Raise the arms. Pull the belly in. Exhale, folding over the legs. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, Virabhadrasana, right side. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Inhale, left side. Exhale, all the way back down, lower. Inhale, open the chest, exhaling over the toes. One, two, three. And five, bend the knees and step or hop. Long spine. Exhale. Inhale. Utkatasana. And Samastiti. Third one. Inhale. Utkatasana. Exhale. Fold. Belly in. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, going back. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling, Virabhadrasana. Exhaling, Chaturanga. Open the chest. Over the toes. Second side, the left foot forward. And all the way down. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Find your gazing point. Staying there. And see if you can feel the stillness in the mind. Two. Three. Four. And five. Bend the knees. Step or hop. Long back. Exhale, head down. 
four, five. Press the feet, inhale, come up. Turning all the way to the end of your mat, squaring the hips. If you want, you can bring your left knee down. And you're gonna to try to get your elbow or the whole arm, Parvrita uh, Parjana Konasana. You can do the hands in prayer or the hands on the outside of the foot. Straighten the back leg. One, two, So do the variation you did on the first side. So if you're doing the full thing, go ahead. Or you can put your knee on the floor, you can hook your elbow, press the hands into prayer, and pick up the right leg. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, coming up. Bring the outer edges of the feet parallel for Prasarita. Fingertips into the lower abdominals, chest lifted. Exhale, go halfway down. Put the hands on the floor. Inhale, extend through the spine. Exhale, bend the elbows and place the head down towards the floor. Don't hesitate if you need to bend the knees, go ahead. One, two, Three, four, five. Inhale, straighten the back. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, all the way up to standing. Exhale, fully. Inhale, open the arms. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, to prepare belly in, chest open. Exhale, going forward, keeping the fingertips pushing into Uddiyana Bandha. Gaze to the nose. One, two, three, four, and five. Press the feet. Inhale all the way up. Exhale fully. Inhale, open the arms. Exhale, interlace the fingers behind the back. Open the chest, preparing. Exhale, going forward. One, gaze to the nose. Two, three, four, and five. Inhale, as you come all the way directly to standing, Exhale here, hands to the hips. Inhale, just preparing. Exhale, go forward, halfway down, take the toes. Inhale, belly in, chest open. Exhale, bending at the elbows. See if you can bring the wrists over the big toes, the elbows over the wrists. One, gaze to the nose. Two, check we still have Mulanda. Three, four, And five. Inhale, straighten the back. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, all the way up. And exhale to the front. Open the arms to the sides, thumbs facing down. Bend at the elbows, bring the hands in reverse prayer. Step the right foot back, turn the left toes in, and turn all the way to the back of your mat. Open the chest, belly pulling in. Feel like that right hip is lifting up towards the ceiling as you go forward. One, two, three, four, five. Press the feet, inhale, coming up, turning to the other side. Align the hips forward. Feel like that left hip bone is going to keep reaching to, up to the ceiling as you fold down. Trying to keep the pelvis 
misaligned. One, two, So make sure you're in a nice, strong samastiti. Bring your right foot in front of you and then anchor your thigh into the hip bone, into the hip socket, and see if you can pull your leg up and take your toe. If your knee is bent, feel like you're arcing your heel forward and up to straighten the leg, and maybe you bend forward, or maybe not, as you need. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, externally rotating that right thigh, opening to the opposite side. If it's possible, follow the horizon and gaze over the left side. So two, three, Four, and five. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale if you're folding. Inhale up, release the hand, and keep the leg up. One, chest lifted. Two, three, four, and five. Release it down. Second side. So you can either go into it with the leg straight, or you can bend your knee, take your toe, and arc your heel forward and up as you straighten the leg. Or you can keep the leg bent. Exhale, if you're folding over, exhale, fold. One, two, three, four, and five. Inhale up. Exhale, externally rotating that thigh as you open to the opposite side. And if possible, gaze the opposite direction from the foot. Three, four, and five. Inhale, back to center. Exhale if you're folding. Inhale, lift the chest. And let go of the foot, holding here. Two, three, Engage the right buttock. Four. And five to release. Half lotus, Ardhavada. So bring the right leg into a half lotus position or a tree. And then reaching behind, taking your toe or the arm. Lift the lower belly in, elongating the spine. Exhale, folding forward and putting the hand on the outside of the foot. Holding down, one, careful with the knees, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, first lengthen, soften the standing knee, press into the foot and come up and try to release with control. Second side, so being careful how you bring that foot into the lotus. So you could also put it into the tree position, and you could also stay standing if you feel like your knee is in a precarious position. Okay, don't hesitate to listen to your body. If you're going forward, it's an exhale to fold, and you're going directly into the pose, folding down. One, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, lengthen, soften the standing foot, knee, press into that foot, and come up, and release. And coming back to the front of the mats. Toes touching, inhale to raise the arms up, exhale, folding over the legs, belly in, neck released. Inhale, open the chest, Exhale, step or hop and lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. 
bend the knees, step or hop forward, and this time staying in Utkatasana, fierce pose, keeping the knees together, arms up. One, two, three, four, and five. Going forward directly, stepping or hopping back. Chaturanga. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, over the toes. Virabhadrasana A, right foot comes forward. Bend that front knee over the heel, raising the arms up. One, two,
tops of the hands, the hamstrings are all engaging. See if you can hold here. Okay, so this is the main trick to be able to do this pose. Then, left fingertips behind you, hook your elbow, and then make sure your knees keep pointing straight forward. Push into your elbow, so you're pushing your elbow into the knees and the knees into the elbow. And try not to come too close to your legs. You have all this space here so that you can turn the chest all the way to the left side. Okay, then if that's working for you, you're going to slide your arm down and then press into that arm. Okay, can you get the back fingertips off the floor? <laughs> I see some. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, let's try the other side. Okay, we'll try some other tricks, but this is just the first one. Okay, so bring your fingertips back, squeeze the legs together. So the reason why I do this is for me, I think the foundation of this pose is to be able to sit and hold this. Some people think it's about the twist, but you can't get the twist until you're stable in the squat. Okay, so right fingertips behind you, left elbow on the outside of the knee, and then press the elbow into the knee and feel like your chest is reaching all the way to the right side. So almost everybody can do a version of this. Even if that right hand is really down, you could do something like this. Okay, and then let the sitting bones come down, shake out your legs. So, you can kind of see that if you're able to be very steady there, then you're going to be able to slowly get further into the pose. Um, how many of you have blocks? Let me see. Somebody have something? Because if you have a block, this is going to be a little bit easier for you. If not, you're going to have to try the same thing again. So you take your block like this, or your dictionary. The only thing with the dictionary is you're not going to be able to, because what I want you to be able to do is tilt it so the block will be on an edge like that. If you have a dictionary, you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to just be sitting on your, your dictionary. So you've got your block, and you're going to come and start to bring yourself close to the block so that you're sitting on the block. And then bring your feet forward. So not too close, right? So if I'm here, first of all, for me, my heels don't come on the floor. So I have to walk my feet further forward enough so my heels are pressed into the floor. And then notice what I can do is I can, oops, I can tilt forward and see how the block comes off from the floor. Okay. So I want to be able to use the block to help me keep my weight forward. This pose is really hard on the shin muscles, in fact. So if you, when I learned it, my shin muscles were burning for at least a week. So you need to be able to sit forward like that. Okay, let's, let's see what's going on there. Everybody, so tilt forward and see, yeah, okay. So then you get your tilt forward And then you're going to bring your right elbow on the outside of the left knee and you're going to push into your elbow, take your left hand and try to pull your right ribs a little bit forward. Okay, so you can sit and hold the pose like this or you can slide the arm down, making less space here and keep pressing the arm. What I want you to find though is that your right shoulder blade is engaging and it's down on the back. Okay, so don't let that right shoulder blade lift all the way to the ear. And check your knees. I see some of your knees are kind of turning to one side. Okay, so that looks good. Good, good, good. And then if you're able to bind, you can go ahead and bind. I don't think we're going to do all that today though. You already know it, go ahead and bind. Otherwise, you're going to release and we're going to try the other side. So, you want to be able to tilt forward, pull in the belly, 
Right hand behind you, hook the left elbow, keep all this space here, and then check your knees are still pointing straight forward. Press your arm into your knees, your knees into the arm, resisting the pressure, and then trying to open the chest all the way to the side. And then if that's feeling okay, you can slide your hand down, your arm down.
pelvis. The next part is the strength of the arms. And it's the strength of the arms coming from the shoulder blades. So if you know these W arms that I talk about a lot, it's like you're finding W arms. You anchor your shoulder blades, you use your arms, and you're pulling your leg up towards you. And then check in with the lower belly. The lower belly is still pulling in. Breathing here, you can look up to your toes, the upper toes. Press those back toes on the floor. Inhale, open. Exhale, release. And if you want to do a vinyasa here, you can jump through, do a vinyasa. Usually in the traditional series, there is a vinyasa there. So go ahead, do what you want to do. After you came through, and also you can learn to jump through with the leg already back. But let's, um, as this is an introduction, I want you to know how to put the leg in a safe place first. Okay, so you're going to lean towards your right, bend your right knee. So notice when I lean to the right, my right sitting bone is off the floor. So it gives me more space to be able to put this leg into a safe position. I'm going to squish the back of my calf, so I'm just squishing it so that the flesh, especially if you tend to have a lot of strong muscles in the calf, you're really going to, this is going to be really useful for you, okay, so that the muscle isn't um, inhibiting the bending of the knee, so the muscle is pushing to each side, and then as you, as you come, start to come to sit, you're going to take your hands on this inner line and just gently bring this inwards so that when you're sitting, this foot is the five toes are firm into the floor, the ankle is straight, the knee is pointing straight forward. So it's as close to its kinetic chain. Kinetic chain is my hip, my knee, my ankle are moving together. And so we want to respect those three joints. So now my hip bones are, I mean, sorry, my sitting bones are pushing firm into the floor. If that's not happening, and if the knee isn't straight, I keep stressing it because I see many people practicing without that. And I think over the long term, it's not the wisest. So then you can sit up on something. Okay, so. We're going to go slow, you're going to bend your right knee, take your right hand to the sitting bone skin and pull that sitting bone skin. So it's not like you're not pulling the whole buttocks under, right? I'm not asking you to injure your lower back. I just want the skin, the flesh there to kind of pull under and connect behind the back of the knee. Okay, so then you're interlacing your fingers behind the thigh, lean back, notice when you lean back you have to pull in your belly and then bring the shin parallel with the floor. And once again, I'm too forward and my knee is sliding, slippery yoga pants on a slippery floor. Okay, so from there you work about straightening the leg and then maybe you hold somewhere on that leg or the foot and then shoulder blades. Pull the shoulder blades like the shoulder blades are going to come through the front of the chest. Use the arm muscles and pull the leg towards you. Open the chest. Feel like you're lifting out of your waist and look up to that upper toe. One.
Okay, so I'm going to break it down again. You're going to turn your toes under, bring the two toes together, the two big toes, and then push the heels away. And so notice that when you push the heels away, you can co-contract all the muscles of the legs. So you can feel the hamstrings engaging and the quads engaging. The buttocks are firm, but not squeezing so that you get this external rotation. Okay, so you don't want that. You want the center of the line of the leg, the hip, the center line, through the center of the knee, through the center of the ankle. You want this pointing straight downwards. Okay, so checking, big toes together, pressing the heels away, feel the two hip bones wrapping towards one another, and then the pubic bone pushing into the floor. Place the palms face down for now, palms down, and then press into the palms and open the chest. Feel like your shoulder blades are going to come through the front of your chest. Now, you're just going to uh, turn at the elbows, I hope you can see from there, that my hands are on the floor at the moment, palms are down, but I'm going to turn so the backs of my hands are on the floor. And I keep pushing the backs of the hands into the floor and then just point the toes. Okay, check your knees are still straight. Pubic bone pushing down. Reach the balls of the big toes away. Make sure the knees are straight. I can see some bent knees there. And then just change the hands so the hands beside the waist. Roll over the shoulders. Keep reaching the feet away, straight legs. And then let the 10 toes come down, roll over the shoulders, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lengthening through the spine, pressing the fingers, reaching the sitting bones away from you. Leaning forward, coming all the way down to the floor. Okay, big kasana. So this pose is to open the fronts of the thighs. Okay, so sometimes it's a little bit of an inaccessible way to do that. So if you know the pose this way, Sukhjavirasana, right? Which is not called this in Ashtanga, but I don't know if it's not an Ashtanga pose. But it's kind of similar to this, except for you're lying on the back, and then, I mean, lying on the belly, and then you're getting a back bend into it. Okay, so if you feel like this is just completely inaccessible for you, this pose, then this is something that you could work on, because it's like you're bringing the um, tops of the buttocks under, you're lifting the hip bones towards you, and then you imagine you're letting the feet, I mean, letting the knees separate a little bit, but keeping the feet close to you. Okay, so it's not, right, it's not like this. Okay. So if what I'm going to show feels totally inaccessible, you can go back and do that. Or if you really want to work on second series, then once in a while, you know, through the day or in your primary series, you could add that pose in. Okay, so. We're coming back into the Sphinx pose. You're going to bring the elbows under the shoulders, pull the arms towards you so that the chest reaches forward. And then press your 10 toes into the floor. The feet can be a little bit separated. Okay, and then I see comb there. <laughs> Cute. And then put the low ribs onto, or sorry, bring your left hand at an angle, like it's going to come towards your right hand. And then lower your low ribs onto the floor, and you're going to bend your right knee up. Okay, so you're going to reach behind with the thumb pointing upwards. And then take the top of your foot, so your thumb is on the sole of the foot, and the fingers are on the back of the foot. Okay, so then, see this arm? See how I kind of want to sink into the floor? Instead of doing that, I'm going to press into my arm and lift my chest. And then, you're going to start to pull the foot towards you and see how my elbow points to the side. 
And then slowly, 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 it starts to point up to the ceiling. And then I'm trying to go slow motion so you can see how my hand is turning. And so then my fingers are turning towards the toes. Okay, so that I have a little more strength in that hand. And then I'm pushing my foot in towards the floor. So I'm using my arm to push the foot down. But I'm also pushing my foot up towards my arm. Okay, so you have that resistance. And then you can release. Bring your right hand towards your left hand if you're in sphinx, so your left, your right arm is at an angle. Point your toes, bend your left knee, bring your left hand behind you, thumb pointing down, and then take your thumb to the sole of the foot, fingers on the top of the foot, push into your right arm, lift the chest, anchor your right shoulder blade, start to pull the foot towards you, the elbows pointing to the side. Slowly, slowly, the elbow starts to point up towards the ceiling. My toes and my fingers are pointing in the same direction. And then pressing the left hand into the floor as the foot presses up. How are you guys doing? Good. <laughs> I know this one's kind of silly, you know. It's it's one of those poses. There's a few of those in Lei Shabda, right? But it's still, it does stretch the thighs. <laughs> okay, so just releasing for a moment. Let's do a vinyasa, and then we're going to try with both feet. So open the chest, over the toes. Leaning forward, coming down. Okay, so coming back up into a sphinx pose. Separate the feet, like an um, upward dog separation, and then pull with your forearms, and then let the belly lengthen forward, the chest lengthen forward, and the shoulder blades come onto the back. Okay, so you feel like you're going to go into a back bend with a long back. Lower the low ribs onto the floor, bring your hands behind you, thumbs pointing down, Bend your, uh, bend your knees, and then the thumbs are on the soles of the feet, fingers on the tops of the feet. Okay, so far so good. <laughs> and then you start to see my elbows, they're going to point towards each other, and then slowly, 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 I'm trying to turn my elbows so they point up towards the ceiling. And as I do so, I'm pulling my feet towards me and turning my fingers so my fingers are pointing in the same direction as my toes. And then, usually what's happening is we're overstretching the tops of our feet here. So to make sure I'm not doing that, I'm pushing my toes up towards my hands. So my hands are pushing down, my toes are pushing up. And then reach the back of the head back. And release. <laughs> Upward facing dog. Oh, he's super cute, Pearl. <laughs> he's gonna do yoga. <laughs> and downward facing dog. So if you need to, you can bend the knees, stretch out the back, lengthen the spine. And when you're ready, coming forward, plank pose, and lowering all the way down. Coming up high onto the forearms. Okay, so I'm trying to make this very accessible for even if you um, are not doing certain poses in the primary series. I think if you've been doing primary series for maybe two or three years very steadily, then it could be interesting to start trying to do a little bit of second series to kind of change what's happening in the body. Okay, so you're onto your forearms again, and then you're going to slide your forearms back as you reach the chest forward. Bend the knees. The knees are about hip width apart. Flex the feet and bring the inner sides of the feet together. Okay, so you want to push the pubic bone in 
into the floor, and you want to have length in the lower back. Then allow the low ribs to come onto the floor, interlace your fingers behind the back, and reach your hands away. Okay, so now you're only going to take your ankles if the hands and the feet touch. Okay? So if we don't, if they don't touch, then you work here, opening the chest. You can also lift the knees from the floor. Okay, this is wow, this is really good. Or you get your ankles, and then there's some resistance work here. So my foot is reaching away, like that, my ankle is reaching away as my shoulder is reaching forward. So they're working against one another. So I'm opening the backs of my knees, reaching my feet away, keeping my shoulders a little bit forward, and then I start to lift the feet up towards the ceiling. And then keep the low ribs onto the floor, see if you can point the toes. Oh my. <laughs> and see if 
they can lift them up again. And if possible, I can get my thumbs on my shoulder blades and push my shoulder blades so the shoulder blades are going to come through the chest, through the front of the body. Okay, if you can't get your thumbs on the shoulder blades, you can even have the hands on the sides here and pick up your chest up towards the ceiling. Bring the hands on the upper inner thighs and you're going to use your hands to slide the upper inner thighs backwards. So this way. And then you're going to arc back a little bit. Okay, use your hand to slide the inner thighs back or outer thighs forward. If you want to look at it that way. Wrapping the hip bones. Okay, so we're not coming all the way into the shrouds now. We're just going to come up and then bend the knees. And let's do a vinyasa to stretch out the back. Straighten the arms, straighten the legs, lower down, upward dog, and downward dog. And coming back onto the knees. So you need to get all that alignment because this um, camel pose, because you've got gravity, so if I'm hanging back, I have gravity, pulling my um, thoracic area down towards the floor. So if I'm not countering that by having a lift, then I'm going to bend in usually two places, like right where the SI joint or is and where the sacrum comes into the lumbar and where the lumbar goes into the thoracic, these two places. So we're just going to hang there. And over time, this doesn't feel very good. So, Verify your feet. Knees are hip width apart. Pick up the hip bones. Hip bones reaching up towards the ceiling. Sacrum a little bit down. And then lift the thoracic cage. Make length in the waist. Feel the shoulder blades coming up. And then you're just going to place your hands back like this, so the shoulders wrap a little bit forward, and then you start to lean back, but as you lean back, you're lifting up, okay? And then just before your hands come down, switch at the uh, wrist joint, so your hands are on the tops of the feet, and let the head come back.
downward dog pose. A downward dog. And jump or sit to come forward. And coming to lie down on the back. And we're going to do a shoulder stand for a little inversion. So if you know the shoulder stand, just go ahead. If you don't know it or you don't feel comfortable today with that for your neck or you have your period or something, then you can put your legs up a wall if you have a wall close to you or even up the sofa. <laughs> Anything just to get the legs releasing. Or happy baby, I see some of you doing that. This is a good one too. Do what feels good. up the legs, relaxing the shins, relaxing the calves. Relaxing around the knees. Relaxing the thighs.
continually releasing the muscles around the buttocks, the low back, the belly, all around the hips. forehead and the point between the eyebrows. All the muscles of the entire body feel completely relaxed. The jaw melting into the floor. Let's sit nice and still.
closing the mind shut. So breathing gently with this mantra. To send peace and happiness and all the benefits of our practice out to all beings everywhere.